Hey Jay, how's it going, man? Thanks for joining me. What's up, Mark? Melbourne Mark and Jay Taylor. Hang on one second, I'm gonna grab a hat. Sorry about that. <clears throat> my hair was getting in my eye. Um, I start. <laughs> I started. Um, I started a couple sketch covers, and uh, as usual, my bad habit. I um, <laughs> I forgot to draw the face last on this one. I mean, I ended up drawing the face last on this one, and uh, and I was like, shit, I better hurry and figure this out before everybody shows up, so that. I don't get stuck trying to draw a face while talking to people. Um, here's what I'll do. I have two of these covers that are kind of like this where they're sort of worked out, but it's more like a coloring book than anything else. Um, meh, it's going. Still sad about having to cancel my Swarm Fest trip. Yeah, that sucks, Jay. That's, that's, that's real lame. Um, that's too bad. Are you, where, where are you located, Jay? Like, how far away are you? Do you want me to show you the two? What up, what up? Jason Hart, pull up a chair, my friend. Pull up a chair. All right, well, Jason's here too. So what I'll do is, uh, I'm in Kansas. Oh yeah, that's. That's tough, dude. That's crazy. I'm sorry, but you can't make it to Swarm Fest. I'm going to see if I can... I keep forgetting it to mention to Brian. Maybe we should do like a streaming thing or like... I don't know, some sort of live thing that while it's going, uh, people can... That don't go, they can still participate, you know, online or whatever. All right, so I have two of these covers that are like ready to be inked up. Um, do you guys want to see both and then we pick one? And we'll start with that one and then see how far we can get. Maybe we can get pretty far. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so this one that is here, we'll call it... Um, we'll call this one uh, Cover A. And um, they're both like uh, military tactical La Muertas. So there's this one where she's just kind of standing and posing. Or I could start on this other one where she's kind of running and gunning. So this one's A, the one that's on the table, and then in this one's B. And so on this one, she's already kind of just shooting at us. Which one would you guys prefer to see? Hey, Dennis, thanks for joining me, man. For joining us. Everybody's up in here having a good time, getting started on some uh, military tactical La Muerta sketch covers. So would you rather me? Would you rather see me start on this one here? Or would you rather see me start on this one here? Jason Hart says B. B, 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 that's three, that's shooting at us. Tom Pinchuk, what's up, buddy? It's my buddy Tom Pinchuk. What's up, dirty? <laughs> All right, so um, I'll start this one then. Both amazing, love the action of B. All right, that's gonna go with B, B it is. I, uh, I do these, I open them up uh, so that as I'm working on it, the backside of the cover doesn't get all dirty and stuff from the, uh, the board that I put them on. So that's why I have it unfolded out. Um, all right, let's do this. Basically, I'm going to chunk in some black shapes. Like, I know her pants are pretty uh, black, so I'll fill them in. I decided to break up the sketch covers. Um, so, for example, I had 12 full figure shots, right? And I thought, all right, well, what I'll do is I'll make 
of the 12, four will be like tactical military muerta, four will be um, tribal Mayan or you know Inca style la muerta, and then the other four were going to be like Western style. And I figured for each set of four, there should be one Mama Z to three uh, La Muertas. Just, I guess, I feel like La Muerta is more popular than Mama Z. You guys, you guys, anybody watch that Brian Polito thing that he had going on today? I felt bad because I was like, oh shit, he's doing this thing and I hope I'm not butting up against it. It looked like a reminiscing through some chaos stuff. That looked pretty cool, right? You've been smashing out the full figures, all done the wraparounds. No, right? Yes, I'm all done with the wraparound sketch covers. How much left to fulfill the Kickstarter stuff? Um, I have 12 full figure shots, and um, I'm going to turn this a little weird, sorry. It's crazy, man, because like with all of these, I want them to be kick-ass, because I keep imagining, you know, whoever gets one, they're into it, but then they're going to show somebody, and then that somebody will be like, who the hell is La Muerta? And if they see like a cool sketch cover, they'll be like, oh shit, that's cool, who did that? And then, you know, on and on and on, right? So there's no, like, there's no rest. A cover of Maria at the Tomb of an Unknown Soldier would be cool. Yeah, I was watching, thinking, damn, I'll have to leave this. If Joel starts, haha, <laughs> priorities. Yeah, right? <laughs> No, I skipped it, waiting to see the changes in person. Yeah, Jay, a cover of La Muerta at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier it would be cool. But, dang, you know, for something like that, that's what makes it so weird with these. Um, maybe I'm just overthinking it, but I'm trying to imagine, like, well, what would... A complete stranger be okay with you know and I think your thing is cool that you like the unknown soldier thing but that's almost too specific like maybe somebody would be like oh, I don't know I want I don't want real life in like <laughs> comics or I don't know whatever right anyway so I just try to I try to thread the needle no I skipped it waiting to see the changes in person you, you skipped what the uh, what'd you skip Jason I'm confused I, maybe I missed the first part What do you guys think of like a tactical La Muerta? I mean, it's not terribly sexy, but it's fucking cool, right? I mean, I keep leaning that way and uh, I don't know. I don't know how it feels to see like a, um, a character all dressed up like a tactical gear, you know? I don't know if people think that would be too weird. Oh, seeing Brian's live stream. Yeah, you're right. No, I skipped it waiting to see the changes in person. Yeah, no, you're right, dude. He is so uh, meticulous in that place. Like I've seen uh, when I went over there the first time to Coffin Comics HQ, Nabra, then people that buy them sketch covers. I'd assume be like me, just having to get a new one this piece. Yeah, I could see that. But I'm also trying to like, you know, make it where a stranger will be like, oh, that was totally worth my energy and time. You know, or my money, shit, more importantly. Um, so, you know what? I, I go all out. I spend a long time on them. I'll think about them. What am I going to do next? Kind of deal, you know? Go full tactical. She's a badass. That's what makes her appealing. Live your dreams, man. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's true, Mark. It's true. The tactical makes sense with her background. Hey, what's up, Yoger? 
Good evening from the Netherlands. What is it like? Um, one in the morning, Netherlands. We're just talking about tactical la muerta, yay or nay, versus like you know, just generic costume. See, because every time I think of la muerta, she's not like a superhero where she has like a costume. I think of her outfit as like a thematic thing where you know whatever gear she has that she can um throw on it's black and maybe she'll spray paint some like white bones on there yes 112 a.m here says yelger well thanks for hanging out man thanks for joining us we're all having a good time talking on one of the stuffs Dedicated, dedication, get it. Yeah, right? Yogi doesn't go to bed till like two or three in the morning. And then he gets up at like five or, or six or some shit, he said. That's crazy, dude. I don't know how you do that, Yogi. Just finished a few more episodes of season five of Van Helsing. Oh, how is that? Is that cool? Anybody seen that? Uh, Brian Polito keeps talking about. Um, it's like a zombie show, I think. It's like uh, Dark Sunrise or Black Something. Not gonna lie, I'm out for twelve. <laughs> this may be the Gomez fanboy crew in the house. Ah, well, you guys are just all hanging out. That's why we're here. Everybody's having a good time. You get anybody here seen um, the witch? Um, I think it's on Netflix streaming. It's the same guy that did uh, the Lighthouse. It's his first feature film. I'm not. I'm not stamped to one. What I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah. Jason's in Louisiana. Doing the Louisiana thing. You right, Gomez fan club in full swing. The witch. Yeah, Tom. Isn't that a great isn't that a great movie? Did you watch it? I liked it. I thought it was good. It was weird. Um And it had that girl who ended up being um I don't know her name, but she was in the Netflix series about chess, Queen's Gambit. She's like that really creepy looking face. I've heard it's amazing, been meaning to get around to watching The Witch. It's good, man. It's really good. There's so many uh, frames in that movie that look like a painting, dude. Because there's like quite a few shots that they just kind of hang up hang out a little long on and um, it's usually like a single light source or something and oh, man I swear to god it looks like some crazy like old Dutch painting or something you know and um, it's just really cool and it's got such a underwhelming vibe to it that when things start happening it gets really creepy I liked it a lot much better than the lighthouse yeah the lighthouse was weird but I insist on pronouncing it the witch. <laughs> yeah, you do that, Tom. Let's see how that works out. <laughs> it's still good, though. I mean, I, I get you. Um, Van Helsing is a fun show. Curious about the graphic novel comic it's based on. Oh, interesting. The Queen's Gambit character's name was Beth. Nosy. <laughs> Beth likes that the character's name was Beth because her name is Beth. How about that?
Gunpowder Milkshake was the movie I was talking about the other day. Gunpowder Milkshake. What? Tell me about that one. Was it good? Was it, is that on Netflix, right? I don't even remember. I saw it somewhere and I was like, oh, this looks kind of interesting. My name for the lighthouse is Suspicious Goo. You know, the, you heard the rumor about that, right? The lighthouse, that it's really, um, it's potentially the same character. That, that whole time that he's really just dealing with himself. Yes and yes. Oh man, and it was good, huh? Gunpowder Milkshake. I saw something about that. A friend, I guess, went to a screening in LA where they, you know, had the, uh, <clears throat> Uh, several of the actors and uh, <clears throat> the director of the thing Lady Hitman Club oh that's cool dude oh shit I'm gonna have to watch that thanks dude I love stuff like that I want to see Gunpowder Milkshake we finished Fear Street I thought that was pretty cool did you watch all three Jay or did you just watch the there's like several chapters right I thought it was like Three separate movies. But yeah, I'm the same. I want to see Gunpowder Milkshake. I've been hearing good stuff. Oh, you watched all three. Damn, you wasn't messing around. Which one was your favorite? Don't they go like forward in time the whole time? I really liked Fear Street. Oh, you liked it too. Well, that's good. See, that's I don't even I don't. You guys are like my film critics. I don't have to go anywhere else. That's that's you guys. Makes it easy. Fear Street is great. Really enjoyed it. Oh my gosh, you guys are giving me good vibes about this thing. I wasn't sure, man. I wasn't sure. I'm extra stoked. I got stuff to watch. I was in the show hole right before that. Fear Street. That's awesome. Do you guys hear they're making a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre? It comes out in September. Ooh, it's gonna be crazy. My bad stirring dinner. Fear Street, a show or a movie? I think it's three movies, Jason. It's like three, I don't know, two-hour movies. I think The Lighthouse had some pretty overt subtext, but I don't know about Willem Dafoe's character just being a figment of imagination. No, no, I, I, well, I mean, it's all rumor, but I heard it's the same guy and that one of them is getting the other one to uh, admit to some wrongdoing. And I think Willem Dafoe is trying to get the younger one to realize something I mean I don't know they don't not even the director will give you a straight up answer about that movie which makes it worse Jay Taylor says Fear Street 1994 has a scream vibe to it yeah I heard that that's cool though that's the whole point I think that was the intention part two is my favorite says Yoga hello how are you doing Takafumi from Tokyo how you doing buddy thanks for joining us we're all talking horror movies and shit good ones and ones we haven't seen in the lighthouse which no one can figure out. How are you doing, Taka? How's it going over there? Is it weird with all the stuff going on in the Olympics? I know you got Olympic stuff going on in Tokyo, right? Are you excited or not really? I know I'm not. I don't think anybody here is that much into the Olympics. Is anybody here into the Olympics? Probably not. Taka in the house. I know, right? Isn't that cool, Mark? You're like in New Zealand and Taka's in Tokyo and we're all hanging out here talking about stuff. Technologies, man. Can you believe it? Taka in the house. Yeah, I'm really excited about the new, uh, new Texas Chainsaw Massacre they're making. Now I'm really excited about Fear Street. Now I got two things, Fear Street and I got um, Gunpowder Milkshake. I gotta see both of those. I watch Winter Olympics for the hockey. Oh, okay.
I don't think, I mean, depends, I guess. I, for some reason, I think I remember, like, last year, or no, not last year, this is every four years, the last Summer Olympics, I was kind of into them, but it was just a timing thing, and it was just something to do while I worked kind of deal. And it hasn't been the same. It hasn't felt like that. All right, I gotta go in and get some dark chunks in here. I don't really watch sports. Only WWE and AEW wrestling, or as far as I can. I can. It's funny. I was listening to uh, <clears throat> Mark Marin. He does a podcast called WTF, and uh, he had that world famous um, record producer Rick Rubin on there. The guy did like Beastie Boys, um, Jay Z, Kanye. Just you know big stars, like big pop culture people. And he's like a huge wrestling nut. Like he even like sponsored a uh, wrestling league that went to the old school style of wrestling um, because he felt like WWE and all these other wrestling things became more kid friendly. And he said, that was fine, but he's like, it's, it's not the same. Oh, he also did Danzig, right? Colonel's like, get off my land. <laughs> Even as today's cat critic. That's awesome. I like it. He gives me his uh, disapproving look. That's cool. Ruben's gotten warmed up to me. Drawing. Maybe he's used to my obnoxious voice. But yeah, Rick Rubin, man. He's like a huge wrestling aficionado. He says it's America's... Um, one of America's greatest storytelling methods, because he says uh, he brought up the fact that you can't even tell when something's real or not real, because sometimes in, in wrestling they will incorporate, you know, real life things that happen. He said. So, for example, he mentioned sometimes these guys really get hurt, like uh, you know, wrestling, and sometimes they'll play that injury up into the storyline. And he says, and sometimes their personal life, it gets in the way and you don't know if it's real or if it's just part of the, the fake storyline. He goes, so sometimes they're always, you know, kind of blurring the line between reality and fiction. And he said, even when it's personal stuff, sometimes people's relationships are broadcast as part of the show and you just can't tell. You can't tell what's real and what's not. I just thought that was fascinating. <laughs> Yeah, he did say WWE was too PG, and he said that's what made him, like, he straight up, like, funded a wrestling league. I don't know anything about wrestling, so I just thought that was crazy. I haven't watched WWE since the Attitude Era. Yeah, I mean, I don't really, I don't, I don't watch much of anything. Um, I only really watch anything around 9 p.m., 9.15, because that means I'm not drawing anymore. And so, most of my day is about drawing or looking up stuff referenced for what I need to draw. Attitude Era was the best. If Taka says, if the situation of COVID is getting better, this Olympics seems to have some problems. Are you excited about the Olympics? Bobby the Brain. You could see Rick Rubin be the next Bobby the Brain here in a hot time. He's a fascinating guy. It was an interesting interview on, on WTF with Mark Maron. I was very surprised. I'm not as into the Olympics this, or this particular year, Taka. I don't know why. It just is so many other things going on. Um, they usually seem to like build up storylines. and I Maybe I don't watch TV as much, but it didn't feel like that was happening. Maybe there was too many things going on here that push that to the back, you know? 
but there's always some sort of build up and they make you get excited I didn't feel like that was happening this this particular year they'll play up the videos of like this is so and so's last Olympics will they get gold will they ever get back on the podium you know that kind of stuff and I don't feel like I noticed that much this this time around I mean I could be like I said I don't really watch as much TV I'll watch the skateboarding of the Olympics. That's about it. I hear you, Jay. I didn't know. That's a new thing, right? The skateboarding? They finally made it an Olympic thing? Or, I mean, maybe it's not that new, but it's it's still somewhat new, right? The idea. Because like anytime you draw guns shooting, you have to make the sound effect. All right, I'm almost, I'm almost it's almost marker time. It all went, went downhill after the attitude era. Most importantly, he produced Slayer albums. I didn't know that. Rick Rubin produced um, Slayer albums. You know what was crazy, dude? They in this interview that I was listening, they said he he produced six Andrew Dice Clay albums. Like, what the? Wow, what is that? So weird, right? Like a comedian. Um. Yeah, I, six albums with Andrew Dice Clay. I think it's cool. I mean, that I I think in, after the interview, I respected him even more, knowing that uh, he had done that. You know. It just meant like he just kind of follows his passions, you know. But yeah, Andrew Dice Clay, like I would have never thought, like yeah, Rick, Rick Rubin is producing my albums, <laughs> you know. It's so weird. But that's cool that he produced Slayer. Like that's so badass, dude. He, that guy's cool. He's pretty talented. Slayer was team for first non-rock album to be. Signed to Jeff Def Jam Records. I had no idea. Wow, how about that? That's pretty cool. Yeah, Rick Rubin. He was a fascinating interview. I, I, I'm glad I listened to it. I wouldn't have. I would never have guessed that stuff about him. You know what I mean? Um, never would have known. You guys seen that new trailer for um, the final, I think it's called The Final Duel with Matt Damon and uh, Adam Driver. Kerry King did guitar work on Beastie Boys, No Sleep Till Breakfast. No shit, wow. So Rick Rubin knew him or met him back then and that's probably when they became friends and then, you know, obviously um, working together was just around the corner after that, right? I'm telling you, that dude, he's, he's a badass. All right, I'm going uh, <clears> to <throat> try and marker some of this up because I'm lollygagging with the blacks and whites. So I'm going to see what I can come up with. Sometimes this helps me finish seeing stuff. Hey, Stephanie, thanks for joining us. Pull up a, uh, pull up a chair. We were here talking movies, Rick Rubin and wrestling, right, guys? Love to watch pro wrestling. So I used to. Oh, I dude, you're it. This guy Taka, he's a huge fan. He goes, he goes to see all the wrestlers that go to Japan. You've been to WrestleMania once. You take a lot of pictures with a lot of wrestling guys. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of wrestling stuff happens in Japan, right? Taka. Last movie trailer I saw was for the new Jackass movie. <laughs> I saw I saw a thing for that. I almost clicked on it, but then I saw the uh, I saw the, uh, the the last duel, and I was like, "Oh shit, what is that? Is that really Scott?" 
Rain and Blood came out in 86 on Death Trial. Oh. Damn, that's a long time ago. I'll try and see wrestling whenever it comes to Australia, Taka. Last time I was actually in New Japan and saw Kenny Omega and Cody Rhodes. Tony Kirk! How you doing, buddy? Pull up a chair. We're all hanging out talking uh, wrestling and Rick Rubin and Def Jam Records and Slayer and, jeez, everything. I'm talking about everything over here. Sorry, I need to keep going because I get caught up chatting with you guys. <laughs> I'm having too much of a good time. How you doing, Tony? Thanks for joining us today. Um, just trying to make it a regular habit of um, turning the camera on when I'm drawing because Beth was telling me I need to get into it. And uh, no better way than just dive right in, I guess, right? That's a cornucopia of randomness. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it really well, you know, it's what it's what we do, man. We're hanging out. Oh man, I've been uh, I've been doing live. Obviously, I've been doing this live stream, but I, I've been also doing the um, on Instagram, right? <sighs> yeah, that's us, Tony. That's right, Melbourne Mark. Mark, Mark, it's just the thing. Uh, anyway, oh man, when I when I get up in the morning, I uh, I'm trying to do the Instagram warm up sketches. I'm trying to do like two to three a week, right? And um, but holy shit, man, first thing in the morning is tough. Like I don't know what the hell I was thinking because it's a it's a, a warm up doodle from from beginning to end. So it's a blank piece of paper, you know, whatever. Um, and sometimes it's like I paint myself in a corner literally as it's happening and I have to like pull myself out of a jam and sometimes you feel like oh no it's not gonna land it's, it's not happening and then you have to like put on your big boy pants and like land the damn thing but it's getting easier it's it's getting easier to do it um, I get a little stage fright because people are watching it's never that many people it's like three people but I don't know shit it's more than what normally watch me how many of these covers will you end up producing for this issue this particular kickstarter i have 47 total sketch covers 16 um wrap around 12 full figure like this one and then uh, whatever the difference is uh bust shot so it'll be like i don't know um torso up you know what i mean um but i'm trying to make them all really not what kind of marker paint pen is that which one this one Here's a Copic uh, W1. I was telling people before on the, on the older stream, like I get these fat wedges because uh, it doesn't allow me to finesse, and so it's like it's like going in with an axe. And so, in a weird way, like it only really lets me throw value down, and I'm fine with that as long as I don't have to finesse it because my natural tendency is just to keep noodling on shit, and it's like it doesn't really help, you know. And I use these uh, old ass, they're called uh, chart pack markers. And I use those too for a variety of, of tone, right? I'm almost done with this one. What do you guys think? Does it look alright? Does it need anything? I'll probably put some splatter. And I'll, oh, well, we get, what is it? Dude, that's awesome. I finished, well, I'll finish this one in about 42 minutes. It's 36 minutes right now. Let me see what I can get done in like five, six minutes. And then we'll jump to the other one that we have going. Joel, we need Beth to do a La Muerta in the style of Grump. Oh, yeah, she might like that. That'd be kind of cool, right? Grump, La Muerta. You're the story behind that saying, right, Joel? Paint myself into a corner is the true story of what Sid Barrett, one of the original vocalists, Pink Floyd, did to himself for taking too much acid. Literally painted the floor to the room. 
<laughs> I remember. I think I remember hearing that. He was stuck in a corner, hysterical. Shout on you, Crazy Diamond, amongst other songs, is a tribute to him and his following. That's sad. That's crazy, dude. Wow, that's. It's interesting, Melbourne. Melbourne Mark. Mark. Who his friend Paramount would be perfect for that. You know, like when you hit that red. Okay, you ever throw in some red? You got it! I'll put some red. Let me get some splatter in here first. But, um. Yeah, Rick Rubin, that was a cool interview, and I was telling Jason this morning, maybe it was this morning, or was it yesterday, there's a new wrestling show called, uh, it's like a drama, not a, not a, a sports show, but it's called uh, Heels, like as in like being the nasty villain or something, but I think it's like on TBS or, I don't know, one of those uh, network cable sh uh, channels, but it's just a, it seems to be a weekly series following wrestlers and specifically these guys learning to be a heel and uh, they had some weird catch line where the, the guy said like make them love you or make them hate you you know and so it was specifically talking about the uh, the archetypes right heel and pretty boy or i don't know what they call it, the good guy but he's not a heel obviously like i got put I gotta put uh, red for Tony. Tony said, throw down some red, dude. Stop talking. To love the custom you did for me from the fan fest idea you had. Red background was great. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. There was one where she was in her trench coat. That one was a pretty big hit. A lot of people liked that one. Should I make the background red? It will take a long time, but I could do it real fast with this sharpie marker. Heels are the bad guys. Yeah, it's a, it's a new show, Yelder. It's called Heels. It's like a drama show. Face is the good guy. There you go. We still have local wrestling circuits here. I was I always wanted to be like an evil bad guy. But that that's awesome. That's cool. I'm telling you, dude. There's an interview on on. Um, I'm gonna go red background while we talk, so I can hurry up. Uh, there's an interview uh, with Rick Rubin on uh, on WTF Mark Marin podcast and. Uh, he really like talks about wrestling and his fascination with wrestling before it became a kid-friendly program. And so he goes on to say how he he's gone ahead and he's like giving money to a league that sticks to that old school style of wrestling and isn't like kid-friendly. Like he wants it to be hardcore wrestling. And so he's saying about he's saying all this shit on on, on Mark Maron's podcast, and he's saying how it's like. It's a very American uh, specific uh, storytelling thing. And then he was just saying how like, you know, you don't know what's real and what's not. And it's just like, you, the way he was speaking on it, you, you could tell he really loved it. And he made shit, just listening to him made me go like, man, I, maybe I should watch wrestling. <laughs> I mean, I won't, I'm not, I don't watch anything. I'm just too lazy working. But, but anyway, he, you could feel his passion for it, and you could see how, you know, people get into it, you know? So I'm going to throw this red on here, and then I'll put a little bit more gray on it so that it can have value changes. I used to see Jerry Lawler back in the 70s when he worked out in Memphis back when I was a kid. That's cool, man. That's really cool. Yeah, I was into wrestling as a kid. I think my dad was the reason, because he was into it too. He used to watch, um, at that time, there was like the Sheep Herders, uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Wow, now that is street cred. That's cool. Yeah, it is like soap operas for dudes. Toy Collector Group on Facebook where I'm monitoring. We got a few members who wrestle for Pro Wrestling Holland. Holy shit, a Dutch wrestling company. That's cool, Yoger. Wow. Hey, Danny, what's up, dude? Danny Morales. Did you watch the wrestling show Mark Marin was on? That was next. Yeah, we were talking about it the other day on here. Glow. Uh, buddy on here, Jason Hart, I recommended the show to him and he said he's almost done with the third season. It's a good show, dude. You should check it out. 
It's fun to see a face turn heel. Yeah, it is. It is. That is cool, man, when that shit happens. Or vice versa, you know? Um, it always happens during the big events, right? Excuse me, I gotta flip this upside down. Sorry. I'll be fast. All right. Didn't mean to disorient everybody. Superfly Jimmy Snooker was awesome. Yeah, he was, right? He's a good one. And, uh... Randy Macho Man Savage. Do you remember Randy Macho Man Savage's brother? Oh, God, what was he called? <laughs> was it like the valedictorian or the graduate? Or he used, to, he used to come up on stage uh, wearing like a graduation gown. Do you remember that guy? I forgot his name. He used to show up with a graduation gown and like a certificate, like if he was graduating. <laughs> <laughs> Undertaker, dude, I I remember when I was watching it when The Undertaker first showed up, like when he first came to the scene, and then I just kind of was out. Was it, uh, was his real name Larry something? You're talking about The Undertaker? I don't know, maybe. I don't know that much about um, The Undertaker. Undertaker was a big heel to face turn. Hulk Hogan going face to heel when he went to WCW. Yeah. He even had that, man, he had that crazy, like, dye job on his facial hair that was wild. Like, it was like blonde with, like, black in it. Like, <laughs> it was weird. See how the hell they do that? Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna do this. What do you think of that? Like a sprite? Bam! Sorry, hold on. Does that look too weird? Does that work? Undertaker's name is Mark Calloway. Yeah, okay. The, the Rock early on WWF is funny. Degeneration X used to make it much fun of him. For me, it was all about the four horsemen. Oh, okay. That's hot. Much Man Randy Savage was great on the first Spider Man movie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was great. I think I need that cover. <laughs> Goldberg, that's what I was going to ask you about that. Isn't he, isn't that like, isn't he uh, recently announced, like for some event? Like, isn't he retired? Or something like that? Okay, Taylor, the old school team. I'll be Lashley. I grew up loving Junkyard Dog. Yeah, I remember that. Ultimate Moyer, Legion of Doom, Nasty Boys. I remember Nasty Boys. Do you remember the uh, the British Bulldogs? Goldberg, Gold Dust is greater. Oh, there you go. Legion of Doom. Oh, you know who. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was one of my favorites. I almost forgot about this guy. He was awesome. Uh, now I may be showing my age here, but do you guys do you guys remember uh, <laughs> Ravishing Rick Rude? Ravishing Rick Rude. Hey, how you doing, Kat? 
Pull up a chair, hanging out, talking bad wrestlers, old school wrestling. I try to uh, set these up, cat, in a way where um, I don't have to do <laughs> I don't have to do too much zany brainy uh, thinking, and so I finish uh, finish the inking on the the book. Uh, New Age Outlaw, Rick Rude and his porn stash. Yeah, dude, remember that? He was awesome. He was such a jerk. I love that. Yeah, he was a douchebag. Yeah, he used to do this thing like he, he used to like uh, like make a V-shape on his belly and pull it all with his hands, right? And pull it all the way up to his, his chest and then like flick his sweat at you. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, he died a long time ago. That sucks. Uh, I grew up on all those dudes as a kid after the Saturday morning cartoons they would air wrestling on TV. Yeah, that's, you know what? Yeah. He was a precursor to Lex Luger. No thinking. <laughs> Here, I'll show you the other one, Kat. I'm almost done with this one, and then we're going to jump to the second one that I laid out uh, for today. Uh, but I just, I'll, I'll show you that one. So it's, uh, it's also a, another, like, these are the tactical series, uh, La Muerta images. So I was telling these guys earlier, I'm going to do four uh with like a mayan tribal vibe and then i'm gonna do four in a western style and then i'm gonna do four in this like tactical uh approach so as soon as i finish markering this one up i'll jump right onto this one uh you know what i'll just jump right into it right now no let's finish let's finish this we're almost done we're almost done all right let me finish this real fast i'm sorry i got caught up talking wrestling he died in 1999, only 40 when he died. Man, all these, all these wrestlers. We know a lot of athletes, right? It's just, just part of the thing, I guess. That's sad. It's like, uh, remember that one documentary about Jake the Snake? Like uh, his, tra uh, I guess his experiences became like a huge deal. Rick Rude was the uh, founding member of DGEN X? I don't know that. Too many amazing superstars in wrestling all died before they could even hit 50. Yeah, it's true. That red is fire. Thanks, Tony. Thank you very much. Um, I think this one's done. What do you guys think? Should I start the other one so that we, we can at least see two sketches going? And will you guys get more bang for your buck? What do you think? Move to the next one? That was a great doc. The um, Jake the Snake one, right? Oh, Jake the Snake doc broke my heart. It was great though, dude. That's that's what it's about. Yeah, that was a that was a tough one. Heck yeah! You mean let's go to the next one, right, Cat? Yeah, all right. I'm gonna do that. I, I'm gonna just say that for Cat was saying. She's she's not talking wrestling. She wants to see some sketchy guys. So. We're over here farting around all right so check this out guys this one's done yeah thanks for suggesting the red tony i would have not done that i looks amazing thanks mark let's jump to the other one yeah i would have not used that red tony that's part of the fun like with these streams i try to leave something out so that i can get suggestions from anybody watching The other day I did a um, Mama Z piece and I someone suggested some horns, so I put them in. All right, so with this one, she's got a little bit of a different look, and I didn't completely finish her necklaces, but I'm gonna get going. Let's get going. Let's do this. Did anybody else watch um, Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling? Like when you have the gunfire highlights only and the shell casings are flying. Thanks, man. Yeah, like that last one, right? 
Um, it's a neat trick. It's like um, getting the uh, viewer to participate. So they're kind of finishing the story, right? You're, you're, I can't wait to see what you also have cooked up for the Western ones. Sorry, no glow. I know. You know, it's funny. I always tell the guys, I only watched it because I'm a huge Mark Maron fan. Uh, but I ended up liking the show. It was really cool. Um, I think it's Allison, Allison Brie. Like, I, I was really impressed with her as an actress. She was really good. Yeah, the Western ones will be fun. I like doing the Western ones. As a man who grew up on the West, the hardest thing for me was about four years ago. After years of not staying in touch with anything with wrestling, I bought a bunch of DVDs for wrestlers I love. I put in the Ultimate Warrior one, and the first message up was... In loving memory of the Ultimate Warrior, I was floored. Oh, that sucks. So that's how you found out that he had passed away. Tony Kirk's, or I like it when you have her in a jacket and an interior coat is red. Oh, thanks, man. They have a good documentary about the 80s Glow Show. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to have to check that out. A Glow documentary. I'm going to need a punk stop on the Z cover. Oh, I hear you, Yoger. I don't want to watch Glow so much catching up on TV to do. I haven't even watched season two of The Punisher. Oh, you know what, dude? I'll save you some time. It's okay. <laughs> I really loved season one of The Punisher and the season two, I was like, oh, what, what? I thought John Bernthal was a great Punisher, man. He was great. Yeah, I, th I think Jelger has one of the punk, I did a, straight up mohawk style a month off for uh, for yogurt you guys excited about the um, the La Muerta sculpture and it's called quarantine studios they're doing the uh, They're doing the sculpture. That's what I've heard from somebody who could want to watch in season one. Yeah, dude, season one of Punisher was awesome. I, yes, I was really disappointed in season two. I think they must have gotten the word or something and they just, you could, there was just something about it. They didn't have the energy or the, I don't know. They didn't seem that into it. Um, Burnthal was intense as usual, but that guy's always intense. Yeah, I got one of the punk lamentas. I can't wait for the statue. Yeah, that's awesome, Kat. I've been working with those guys at Quarantine Studios on that. Um, we go back and forth on um, details. Um, for example, we were working up tombstones, ideas for the tombstone, you know, uh, that she's standing on based on the, the cover they you're using and then um, I had to draw like her boots and all that stuff they tried to make it more emotional in season two. Oh, you tell yeah Punisher I could see that I could see how they tried to make it more emotional I'm not watching the sculptures can't wait for the action figure yeah me too man yeah yogurt I'm waiting for the action figure too what that run he did he had to get that one graded Oh, thank you, Tony. That's cool. You have? Amazing. Yeah, they're really cool. They're really nice people at Quarantine Studios who's going back and forth. Um, they're explaining to me the whole process of how it works. And uh, they have like a Z ZBrush modeling guy and he just like, it's crazy what they can do now. Like he has like, you know, a, a very standard like mannequin of a model of, you know, he's got men or females or whatever. And then based on whatever input we you know go back and forth on he like quickly puts it into this thing and and day they come back and there's like here's what you know 
our modeler came up with and you're like oh wow and it's still like a default character but then he adds like his own he's an artist so he adds tweaks and things to it to uh make it look more like what we want maria to look like you know and uh they're really cool and they're really nice to work with and i expressed my ideas about it and i told him like to me maria is a badass and so like i told them like you know everybody wants to be a badass so she's sexy but she's a badass and the guy was like oh okay i gotcha and so i think I don't know, maybe they were just going to default to, like, just the sexy, but I said, no, 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 like, you, if a, I want to, I want, if a, if a woman sees a character and they think she looks cool, they want to be her, you know what I mean, like, I want to be her being a badass, and they totally got it, he was so easy to work with, he was super cool, and, but anyway, it's the first time I've ever done anything like that, and so, um, I'm just excited and eager to be help, helpful, right? cool stuff you guys ever uh is it anybody play video games much here my wife and i were real big fans of a game well i'm sorry we yep she's probably one of my favorite of the sworn ladies that's awesome thanks cat yeah she's a lot of fun uh they're making this tv show off of a uh, video game the last of us uh with pedro pascal Hell yeah, right? Uh, Pedro Pascal and uh, one of the Game Game of Thrones actresses, the young gal who was like, uh, oh, I forgot her character's name, but she had a, a gruesome warrior's death in like the final season. Final Fantasy fourteen is X I V mean fourteen? I so infrequently use Roman numerals. I don't know the order. <laughs> okay, big question. I collect your work. Ryan Kincaid and Jamie Tyndall. Do you have some other favorite indie artists? That's for you guys. Who's your favorite indie artist, guys? Or you mean me? Only played the first one, but it was really good. Here, the second one was, wasn't as good. I like the second one. I like both of them. Uh, you're talking about The Last of Us, right, Danny? Yeah, both games are great. COD, Call of Duty. Oh, man, there was a, t there was a time when um, Wildstorm and Aspen Comics, people were all playing COD against each other and stuff. It was awesome. <laughs> One time we even got Jim Lee to jump in and play Call of Duty with us, and uh, everybody was trying to kill Jim. I felt so bad. <laughs> actually playing the new world beta oh that's cool i met my wife dark age of camelot that's cool jay jay i think jay worked at a video game or i mean uh he worked on a game he had something to do with star wars games mainly skyrim and fallout we still got a stack of games still in their shrink wrap waiting to be played i saw skyrim at danny's place that looked pretty cool I, was, I could see how you could... Uh, oh, you too, Joel. <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, indie artists, I thought... I didn't know. I have a friend that was on a, as an artist on The Last of Us. That's cool, man. I heard they had a huge art team on The Last of Us for the first game. It looks so unique. I could see how that happened, you know? All right, I'm sorry. I got to keep trying. I can caught up in the conversation here. I like Colette Turner, Don McTeague. I follow Colette. She has a very particular style. Yeah, she does. Don had some great White Widow work. Don's a... Uh, she Canadian? I think she's Canadian, right? Yeah, Skyrim is awesome. It is awesome. Don't answer me. Sora is pretty amazing too. Haha, <laughs> get back to work on this. Yeah, seriously. That's alright. That's, that's what we do, right? We're hanging out, chatting it up, having a good time.
I worked for Mythic Entertainment for six years, worked on Dark Age of Camelot, Warhammer Online, and Ultimate Online. Worked briefly on Star Wars. Old Republic. That's cool, Jay. That's too bad. That uh, sounds like a lot of fun. Yep, she's Canadian. Don McTeague. I have a custom spider gun that Sora did for me. Oh, that's cool. I prefer to play open world RPG games. Hey, Yelder, it would, um, Red Dead Redemption is, is, is that considered an open world RPG? Because they had story mode, but then they had some other mode where you play online. And I, I could never, you know, be bothered to get into that, but I thought it was, I thought it was, um, open world. <laughs> DOAC takes me back. Yes, it is, in my opinion. Tactical games like FF Tactics. Final Fantasy Tactics? But great as well. Anyone playing Rust? What is that? What's Rust? What would a Log Marta video game be like? Hmm. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool, man. I would dig that. Just started playing on console. What is Rust? Is it like a sci-fi game? Is it a horror game? Old school Blackthorn. Ha ha ha. That's what you're saying, the Log Marta video game would be like? She would be a FPS role play game. What is it? FP, FP, um, I know a role RPG, but I don't know. What. I'm sure she's just nearby, but could you tell us how you met Beth? I met Beth. She's in the other room talking to the vet. Our dog's been not so great. Uh, Ark with dinosaurs. Hello, well. AWD. I met Beth in. Um, Junior college. I was going to a school here, I mean, in LA called the Art Center, uh, and then I was taking afternoon classes at a, a uh, <clears throat> junior college because it was cheaper than the Art Center um, figure drawing classes. Post nuclear. Oh, I see. Post nuclear radiation. First person shooter. Yeah. You guys, man, you guys got the lingo down, man. First person shooter RPG. Yeah, Kat, you're right. You hit it right on the head. I just, I'm so, um, I'm unfamiliar with the uh, jargon. But now I learned. Yelder explained it to me. Wait, your wiener dog is sick? Yeah, he's, we found out. <clears throat> What was it, last year? We found out he has lymphoma, so <clears throat> we're trying to, uh, we're trying to deal with that. It sucks. What are you going to do, right? You can, what you can do is be there for him. I, I, poor puppy. Yeah, it sucks, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, it's one of the reasons I'm not doing any shows. The only show I'm going to be doing is, uh, Swornfest in, uh, February. Because, um, also, because during the pandemic, the kennel that we used to leave him at, uh, they got, they shut down. Uh, everything shut down, sure. Um, so, there was nowhere to, we couldn't take him to the kennel either, you know? 
and uh, and so I figured, you know what, just stay home with them, and you know, we'll ride it out together, see what happens, um, and then whatever comes of that, then I'll decide on shows later. You know what I mean? My girlfriend is more a gamer than me. I learned the lingo from here. Yeah, it sucks for my puppers, but you know, I don't know what else we can do. He's 11, he'll be 12 in October. So he's a little older, but you know, it just sucks. I think it was the, the worst was when we first heard it. It was just like, fuck, they really messed it up. Small dogs, so what I do, take them with. I know, <laughs> I don't know about going to Tokyo and stuff like that, you can't do that. But no, I'm just gonna write it out here with him. Any little, any shows that, that come up, I'm Beth's gonna do on her own, and I'm just gonna be here at home with him. And I'm busier now, a little bit more than used than I used to be. So I guess it's cool, you know, to stay home. Shit, man, I used to do all kinds of shows, and maybe it's time I take a break. Are many dachshund just turning three in a month? Oh, that's cute. Yeah, my guy, he's a little dachshund. And uh, that's the first wiener dog I ever owned. And holy shit, man, they love to talk. You know, like happy, mad, glad, sad. He's, he's got, he's always barking. You know what I mean? Um, he's never not barking. If I get up too fast, he'll bark. If I get up too slow, he'll bark. He just bark, 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 bark. But yeah, it's tough, man. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, I, I, I probably will take a break from pet ownership uh, for a little bit after all of that. Um, follow our pup on IG, Mary Jane Doxy. There you go. God, that means you won't be at the New York one in October. I have three miniature pinchers, so I know that they the barking. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to try to do New York, but like I said, it was just such a, I would, you know, with my luck, like some, some shit would happen while I was gone. You know what I mean? Oh my God, I couldn't live with myself. I'd be so pissed. Uh, Mr. Gomez, sorry to inform you. Oh God, I'd be so pissed. <laughs> I don't, it's not funny, but you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just dealing with it. This is my first dog. I had a cat for 16 years. That's a long time. This is my first dog in a long time, too. Like, uh, I had pets before this when I was, you know, 18 or so. And uh, I never saw the end, I, you know. I think I... I never saw the end. Like, uh, I always moved, like, I moved out before I could, you know, my family dealt with that. And I was becoming like uh, my own person living in my first apartment, so. This will be the first time that I face that. And it's not fun. No, sir. Not fun at all. Our oldest cat was 23 when he passed. Damn, Yelga. That's great, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it, it, it all you can do is give him a good ride. Right? We can always just be here and uh, make sure that we're there for them. I think it's uh, it's important. I think it's a good thing to deal with, you know? They, they help you understand mortality. But before all of that, they, they bring joy. Joyful little creatures. They make the day-to-day -day go by a lot better, right? But yeah, I, I think it'll be a while before I think about another one. I mean, of course, that's what I'm saying now, but I might change. It's tough. Yeah, it is. All that stuff is. But you, you know it when you sign up. As soon as you get them, you have to know that, right? Like, you have to be aware of that. But it's not what you want to think about right there. <laughs> like, oh, look how cute he is. I didn't tell you guys. The other day, I was... Um, 
trying my first uh, live stream on uh, Instagram. And I didn't put much thought into it. I just finished having a cup of coffee and my drawing table. Like, I'm, where I'm at right now is not my drawing table. This is, uh, that's why I couldn't get another cat. Yeah, Tony, I, I hear you. I'm the same way. Still got three cats and two snakes now. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, it kicks me in the feels thinking of the fur family I've lost in my life. Totally get having a break for a while after saying goodbye. Yeah, totally part of the deal. It is. It is. I mean, you know. I don't think it's bad. I just think it, it's just part of it, you know. It, no one talks about that stuff, but it, it's everywhere. Everybody's dealing with it. Um, oh, so I was going to tell you guys this funny story. <clears throat> I was trying out my first live stream on uh, Instagram, and so in the morning when I was like almost there, would you? Oh, that's right, you were there, huh, Yelger? Um. It was supposed to be a very nonchalant kind of thing. Like, I was like, all right, this will be cool. Well, fuck it, I'll just do it. I can do this. And um, I didn't put a lot of thought into my setup. Um, my table, my drawing table is like almost at a 90. No, it's not 90. It's like a 50 degree angle. It's pretty steep. And uh, I do it that way so that when I'm drawing comic pages on there, the distortion of the, the, the page doesn't affect the drawing, right? So anyway, um, I tried to do my warm-up sketch on there, and the angle of the table kept having the paper was sliding. It just kept sliding off. And um, and I was having the worst time. Like, I could not get into the drawing because, like, like to, to, to do it effectively, you have to just be able to zone out in the drawing, and therefore, you can just start problem-solving, you know? Like, where does, this, where does this go? Where does this arm go? What's going on with this hair? Where's the light source? You know, all that shit. And I could just couldn't do it. And then out of the blue, uh, Jay Lee pops up on my stream. And uh, he's a really nice guy. I, I met him at some conventions and we we're always near each other. And um, he's a big dog guy. And so he and I used to, anytime I saw him at a show, we just talk about our pets. And so, yeah, he pops in, and, and now I'm like, shit, fucking Jay Lee's on here. And I'm like, fuck, now I gotta draw something nice. Like, I can't draw nice right now. Like, that, I'm having a hard time. And so I'm little, I'm starting, I'm like starting to sweat. Because like, Jay Lee, like, I love his work. He's just, I'm a fan. <laughs> and, uh, and so then he starts chiming in. And he's like, um, how come you did that? That looks kind of weird. Or he says, um, boy, you really abuse your, your, your brush pens. How do you still get them to work? And I'm just like, God damn it, Jay Lee, you're making it worse. Uh, and I was like, oh man. And so like, I'm, I'm like literally sweating and I can't figure out like the drawings going poorly. And now Jay Lee's like making jokes. And at one point I just let go and I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. This is funny. Screw it. This is this is cool. I, I I can hang, you know. And at one point, Jay Lee's like, "Man, you're changing pins in your hand more often than you're actually drawing. Like, what's that about?" And then it just it just made it easier to let go and just call it a wash. You know what I mean? Like, fuck it. And uh, it was just funny. But at the time it was happening, I was like, "Oh my god, I'm dying." And people are up here watching me. But he made it. He made it so much more funny. Jay Lee has a very unique style. Part of the artists have these high-end tables. Jill's just drawing a piece of plywood and making gold. <laughs> he, he was heckling. Yeah, Jay Lee was heckling. He sure was. But that was what was so good about it. I think he he turned something that was sad into something that was funny. Uh, I appreciated it. I uh, appreciated it. Yeah, I have to draw on that. I have this card table that I use here. This is the, uh, oops, this is a uh, drawing board that I, I put on top of the card table. Yeah, so then Jay, he messages me after the thing and he goes, hey man, I hope I didn't hassle you too much on there. And I said, nah, you know what, dude, at first I was freaking out, but 
I said, then I just kind of went with it, and you made it really funny, and I said, I'm glad you actually did that, I said, because um, it would have been really sad to have all those people watching me struggle. And he's like, I thought you were doing fine. Um, it was just funny, because he's like a monster. He's like an art monster, and he's watching this guy, like, flail. <laughs> he's like, why are you flailing? I gotta hurry so I can get the markers on this. I like your stuff better. Oh, thanks, Cat. He's a good dude. He's a really nice guy. I felt bad for him when he had some weird thing going on with some deep, <coughs> some deep. Uh -oh. so, somebody got Colonel Mustard riled. He got riled up. Something funny going on with the hair. I need to figure it out. I can't do anything until, I can't mark her until I figure it out. Hold on, let me render this stuff up. My dog just woke up and answered. That's hilarious. My dog woke your dog up. Where are you at, Kang? Cat? What, what state or country? Tell us how you really feel, Colonel. <laughs> I still think the warm-up doodle from that stream came out pretty good. Had some happy little accidents in there, but yeah, it turned out great. Oh, you're talking about that first one with Jay? Oh, God, I felt so weird about it. I threw that thing away. I thought the second one came out better anyway. The one after that. <laughs> Colonel Mustard is just saying, uh, how are you guys doing? That's what he said. Delaware. But they have been playing hard all day. So, okay, so Delaware, so that means it's uh, maybe eight, seven, 740? No, maybe 8. Something like that. Hang on, let me, I gotta get in here on these eyes because she needs some help. Eight twenty. Ah, oh, that was so close. Damn it. Three hours, right? I should have known that. Sorry. Did anybody see uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong? Does anybody like that kind of stuff? The second one was amazing, but the first one after the struggle with the hood, you made it work. Oh, right, 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 the sketch. Dude, I was like sweating, like I never sweat so hard for a stupid sketch as then that one day. I had not but want to. Yeah, me too. I wanted to see it and I was like, I, had a, I asked a friend like, hey, what do you think? And he, <laughs> he says like, he like had a long pause and he's like, it's all right, it's all right. And I was like, all right, all right. And then for whatever reason, I just thought, mm-mm, mm-mm, that pause was way too pause. And I was like, mm-mm. Mm -mm. I'm behind on my guess all movies. We stayed at, oh man. Was it last year? We stayed at the uh, Godzilla Hotel in Japan. 
uh, after Tokyo Comic Con, we went uh, and stayed two nights at the uh, Godzilla Hotel. That was pretty cool, man. That was wild. Like, they had a, a Godzilla head. Uh, I saw Black Widow last weekend. That's cool. Yeah, I want to see that. They had this Godzilla head, and it's placed, I guess, like, respectively at the height he would be if he were alive, right? Um, can't take kaiju too seriously. It's beer and popcorn sort of stuff every time. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but yeah, this um, this Godzilla Hotel was really cool, but it was weird. They had like a, a thing where they would sh they had all the movie posters for all the Godzilla movies, right? And oddly enough, they didn't have a single like of none of the American Godzilla movies. Yeah, the hotel in Shinjuku. Yeah, Taka. It's awesome. I stayed there last time when I saw you at the show. Like, after the show ended, we spent two days in in uh, Shinjuku. Uh, I shot a video, and um, we shot a couple of process videos, but we just wanted to go walking around and check out Golden Guy and uh, Akihabara and... Uh, you know, all the cool stuff out there. There's a lot of cool stuff. It stands out so I wish I went to the check. Oh, is there. Yeah, it's cool, man. My wifey wants to go to Japan for Pokemon. <laughs> There's a lot of fun stuff in Japan, man. I love... We, we, we uh, went with some friends who really know the area. Okay, hey, real quick, I'm going to start markers, okay? Okay. We went with some friends who know the area real well, and uh, they knew how to take the trains and all that shit, and so we got to do all that, and that was fun, man. It was a lot of fun. It's just so different. It's a different experience. You know what's funny is uh, they were already doing it, but maybe it'll become more of a common thing in general, right? As uh, everywhere we went, people were wearing masks. Like on the train or on anything where there's a lot of people. Japanese people were already wearing like the masks and stuff. This was pre-pandemic. But it's a different thing, man. You know, um, proximity and personal space um, is, uh, is somewhat negligible in Japan. You have to adjust to the idea of, you know, sharing more space. You have less space, I guess. Right? I want to go to Japan to see the shrines and visit our sensei out there. Your, your sensei, like your, your martial arts instructor? That's cool. That's really cool. Um, my favorite thing about out there is the food. They are well ahead of the curve with that. Yeah, that's crazy. My favorite thing was the food over there. It was really good. Everybody's really nice. And uh, just seeing certain areas of Japan where the the architecture and the, the way space is used is so different from what I'm used to. That's a lot of fun seeing that kind of stuff, you know? There are some Pokemon shops in Tokyo. No way. Are you serious, Taka? <laughs> I'm kidding, but there, there better be. Shit, there better be some Pokemon shops. Yeah, owning large patches of land is not as common as here. You know, it's becoming a... Even that's changing, right? Not a lot of people are doing that anymore either. Not here anyway.
I don't know how you do markers like that. I would mess the sh that shit up in no time. <laughs> well, you don't understand, cat. I am messing it up, but because I put it everywhere, it looks like I'm meaning it. Like well, I was saying earlier, I only um, get these wedges because they prevent me from getting finicky and really like noodly with my rendering. With this, it just basically allows me to just chop in, and that's it. Like that's the extent of it, you know. And then I just continue that style uh, throughout. It's funny, after wearing a mask for you, I needed to get used to not having to wear one. Yeah, same here, man, same here. What do you guys think? Should I put another red background or is that too repetitive? Like if, what if I leave like, um, what if I leave some streaks of white and then like this will be red, this will be red. And then this will be red. Yay or nay? Is too much red? Is it too much red everywhere? Which one's juicy? Oh, that's good. We were shocked seeing you use the wedges, but now it makes sense with your style. Right? Now you see it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the red down then. Nobody's saying no. <sighs> Cast a red shadow. Hmm, too much red. Oh, see? I'm glad I asked. See, I was about, I was about to do it. Mm. Can't stop me. Streaks of white sound good. So, like, what do you think of this? Like, right here, everywhere there's graphite, there would be, like, red. So it would almost be like white smoke within the red, right? I did a Lobo thing like that today. What do you think? What do you think? Starry night sky. Well, I couldn't do it because then, like, she's already mostly black, and it'll just be, uh, oh, I could, I could try that. Let's try that. A moon. That's a good idea. It's a good one. Too. Good answer. Good answer. I'll do Moon, just because Tony suggested it. Now I gotta erase all this damn graphite. Hey guys, look at this graphite. I think that's cool. The Moon, you like the Moon? That's a good idea Tony had, right? Is it more fun when you get to interact with the art and make suggestions? It should be, right? Red smoke on moonlit night. How about some skulls? You can never have too many skulls. I'm just going to go to school, but I don't know what Alright, yeah, I'm going to do the moon. I'm going to do the moon. I'll throw a couple more skulls on there in there for a Stephanie. Very fun. I'm going to have to get something big and circular. Hold on, okay. Alright. Bada bing, right? Use the Jim Lee method. He used to just find whatever was around. Plastic cut. CDs. CDs were his favorite. He used to make circle templates using CDs. Bada bing. Absolutely more fun. I bet whoever gets these particular will love being able to come back and watch the actual. I didn't even think about that. Melbourne, Mark? That's right. Maybe they could watch the uh, process video with their sketch. A, I didn't think about that. I should have sold it as such. Nah, I'll figure it out. I could do all those crazy moon craters. Oh, and then I could do like the red sky. Like, like uh, what's it? I think it was Cat was saying that, right? Let's see. Red smoke on a moonlit night. Yeah, that's what Cat said. 
All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. Now that I know we got a moon here, I'm gonna go in and fill in the, the red that we were talking about earlier. I have to, I have to kick it into high gear. My dog has a walk coming up. He's threatening to poop in the house if, if I don't take him. He says he'll do it. He's not afraid. All the hard work we put in with these. <laughs> Terry's like, oh, oh man, Whew. I'm beat. But it's just fun because, I mean, then it's like, you know, it's more interactive. And then if I ever run into you guys at a show or something, we could say, remember, we're talking about Ravishing Rick Rude. And when we were talking about all those movies, it's just fun, right? It's like we uh, we already broke the ice, and now we're just like getting down to it, having fun, maximizing our fun, right? Now, if you don't like it, it was Jay's idea. I know, you'd be like, you could sell that way in the future. Come hang with the artists and give feedback. That's a premium service. <laughs> I only charge 5% commission for that idea. Jokes. But people would totally love that. I don't know, just something fun, something different. Like why, what, what, what's, what's any, what's different about that stream from the other streams or, you know what I mean? Like I think because of the way I work, the way I draw, like, um, a lot of it is just winging it. Like, you know, I'm, making it up as I go kind of deal, it almost can feel very um, performative, right, in a way. And so I think, like, I'm trying to learn how to play that up even more in these streams because um, to, to, to be able to pivot and, and switch around and, you know, that's fun and spontaneous, and especially if you're into it where you can ask somebody, hey, what do you like? Do you want to see this? Do you want to see that? And they can tell you, do this. And you're like, all right, cool, let's do it. It's, uh, I don't know, it feels a little more interactive. Hold on, i got to make this smoke thing here. I wish you could share pics on here. Now, if you don't like it, Jay's fault. Everybody's laughing about that. God damn it, Jay, you terrible idea. What the hell are you thinking, man? Oh, so I'll still go back in after the, on top of the red and put a little more gray, just to give it like uh, different values of red. It reminds me of, uh, I, was a, I was a huge fan of um, Batman the Animated Series and more specifically Batman Beyond. And they always had like those really crazy red skies where you're like, that's not what the sky looks like. It's like, who cares? It looks cool, right? Awesome. I love seeing how you make it work. Jade loves doing art, but I can't draw at all. Hey, you can. You just, uh, just practice, man. All right, all right. Let's see. I gotta hurry up. Make this happen. Hmm. <laughs>
Oops, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you guys couldn't see that. I'm like throwing majesty lines and you guys can't even enjoy them. Sorry, should have said something. I moved it. I have that habit of... Oh, it's coming out smoking. Thanks, cat. I was nervous. I was going to figure out whether I would be mad at Jay or not. So that's interesting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, all right. Let me, uh, I need to do some moon craters. I remember uh, <clears throat> when I was younger and I was collecting comics in high school. Todd McFarlane was on Spider Man. Man, he used to draw like the coolest crazy moons ever. You know? Taking paraphrasing. <laughs> um, Todd McFarlane, he used to draw like the coolest moon craters ever. And like. I remember showing a friend who was not into art and he was like holy shit like I don't even think the moon has that many craters I was like what do you mean he's like that's ridiculous I was like that looks cool all right I got like 15 more minutes let's see Little alien on the moon. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Because <laughs> we'll all dig it, but then whoever will get this will be like, what the fuck? Why is there an alien on the moon? They won't be in on our conversations. They won't enjoy it like we will. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. It does. It really does, right? Wow, it looks so weird on the screen on the on the uh, computer. Like in life, it doesn't look like it does on the screen. Wow, amazing! Thank you, Taka. I appreciate it, man. What time is it for you? Oh, it's too dark. What do you guys think? Some splatter? Or eh, no splatter. Put some splatter effects. I'm loving that moon behind her. Thanks, cat. Somebody suggested it. Loving it. Since so, Mark, I would have been in a pickle. Melbourne Mark's a splatter. I 
I mean, how can you say no to splatter it? Like saying to a little kid candy, right? It's true. All right, what do you guys think? Anything look weird? Do you want me to fix anything? I think it's about there. It might be done. What do you guys think? Which one, which one do you like better? This was, we'll call this one, um, we'll call this one B, and then this one's A. Which one do you guys like better? A or B? Oops. <laughs> well, if you don't like it, I will take it. I know, right? Do you like the action you pose? Because I got, I have one more tactical thing. Another great piece, B. You like B? Oh, that's cool. Awesome. So I'm going to do a, have one more tactical sketch to do, and I've decided, I can't decide between like a, like an action-y pose. I'll be like, send A to Tony. <laughs> a mainly because of the pose. Okay. Yeah, cool. Well, that's awesome. You guys are split pretty much down the middle, so I, I did my job. Yeah. All right, so for my last one, which I, I, will, I will probably start tonight. I won't be able to, you know, stream it, but both, I'll take both. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Melbourne Mark likes both. Uh, so for my last one, even though you guys will not see it, would you recommend I go with the action -y pose, or do you think the standing cool pose is better? Because right now I have... Um, I guess it should be an action -y pose, right? I should do an action pose. Do another action -y pose. Okay. Both It'd be better. Thank you, Taka. That's cool. Yeah, you guys did help. I'm telling you, dude. We've been doing these like uh, Taka and and Melbourne Mark and uh, Jaeger. They've been helping me with other ones. Action for the last. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you very much. I gotta run. Thank you for joining me today. I had a blast hanging out with you guys, talking movies and wrestling and all that stuff. Um, I'm gonna do. That way, you have two of each. Yeah, that's exactly, that's a good point, Kat. I will do that. I'm going to do that. And then now, anyway, if someone gets it, they, they'll at least, there'll be a variety. They won't all be the same. Leaving against a tall tombstone, jumping for one. Oh, that's cool. That's a good idea, Tony. I might do that. Tactical, tactical screens, action. Yeah, you're right. I, I'm going to do, the last one is going to be action. Thank you for this. No, thank you, Kat. Thank you, Taka. Like I said, you guys end up helping me. I, I build them up enough to where I can get you guys to get involved and then we can have fun. You know what I mean? And then it's just, I did two in a sitting. That's awesome. That makes me more productive than me at my desk farting around on my phone. You know what I mean? So thank you guys. I appreciate you being here and keeping me, uh, keeping my butt in the seat working. Thanks as always, Joel. Love your work. See you, Gomez gang. See you, Mark. Have a great, uh, have a great night, uh, Melbourne. Thank you for these streams. Thank you, dude. Thank you for joining me, Yogger. I'll do one next Thursday, but I might do another one on Tuesday too. Um, I'll put a note up like I've been doing with the little post-it. I'll just put it on the Facebook, and you guys, if you can make it, you can make it. But Thursday for sure, same time for, and then maybe Tuesday. All right, guys. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day, and I appreciate your help. I uh, look forward to hanging out with you guys next week, too. Take care. Bye.